and it's just down. Because my area, Tampanese block, 200 plus area, uh, a lot of Muslim friends. So that's why probably I just suspect only. Because that could be the reason why my area here is totally down. <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh. Okay, so we just uh, wait a few more moments before we continue and resume. All right. Things happen, huh? Anything can happen for a reason. Everything can happen for a reason. Okay. Okay, all right. I think majority of them are back. 35, all right. Well, thank you once again. Thank you guys for uh, coming back in again. Eric must be the big boys monitoring you. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe, maybe. All right, so let's just continue again. So sorry for this happening. Hmm, next time I must know maybe uh, public holiday, I cannot stay home. <laughs> I must go outside. Okay, let's just continue, shall we? Okay, so what do you think, guys? Maybe they are looking at us. Uh, we are buying, we say buy gold, right? Every time come to gold, uh, they always have this, my internet will go down. Don't you realize this? Those who are with me on MAO for quite a while, don't you realize that every time we talk about gold only, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the Zoom will go down. Do you realize that as a pattern? <laughs> okay, anyway, um, I don't know what you typed, guys, for the last session about gold. But to me itself, right, I like gold movement. Why is that so? Because when the gold came down yesterday, now I do understand this. I'm a guy who is more practical when it comes to trading. Now, when gold came down yesterday, okay, all right, it came down yesterday, right? The Dow Jones came down. But you notice that after that, the gold actually recovered first before the Dow actually went up. So that tells me that, right, actually now the market is going to go into a risk uh, on feeling that they may want to take gold as a primary hedge against the equity market. And I can I can tell you this, if they are all buying bonds to protection basis, then eventually they also be buying gold. So to me, gold is actually a level to buy. All right. So if you look at it yesterday, uh, shall we look at it yesterday? Now yesterday, the opening price for gold was between the two pivot, right? So above OP, you can buy. Below OP, you can sell. But because the KSI is green and there's no blue bars at the bottom, hence therefore, it's very bullish. So if very bullish, then what can I do, right? You can look out for KTR minus one to minus three to look for buy whenever there's an opportunity. And of course, if the market hit the pivot two and instead of going down, it stays above pivot two with a CCRY, right? Then of course, it will be a stronger buy. Okay, understand that? It'll be a stronger buy. So if you look at it right now, you can see what happened last yesterday. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Initially, when the market opens, it was supposed to go up to KTR plus one rather easily. But you can see that the market misses KTR plus one just by a couple of one dollar of a few cents. And then it sort of weaver around the, the, the mid drift of the opening price. So I know I suspect that something's going to happen soon. I kind of suspect that. And of course, when I saw this particular BNB, right? Well, that is where kicking, right? And I tell you this, it's all about sensitivity. So when I saw the CCYR with the BNB, although there was no trigger there, but I told you guys to put the line across it, right? Where you will see a BNB, that was the first sign of trouble. Then after that, there's another BNB, we have put the second one. When I see that two BNB so near one another, and it's all red color, I know that something is wrong. 
And truth be told, when the market breaks below OP, right, look at it, the first wave it came down was KPL minus one. But because the day chart KSI is green in color, that's why it rebounded off KPR minus one. Can you see that? So every time you hit the KPR minus one, it keep on holding, holding, holding there. That's the reason why you need to have the KSI to tell you certain things. Not the, not the intraday one, it's the day chart. To tell you the terrain is towards which side, the buy side or the sell side. Then of course, a big BMB appear, and this BMB is a trigger. CCYR trigger BMB, right, is a sell. So by and right, it will go down to KTR minus two, which really, really happened. But the moment it hit the KTR minus two, do you notice a very incredible thing happened? Not only the KCX was screaming to us to buy, the KSI also turned color. And the crazy part is, do you notice that the closing price of the red bar is exactly on the KTR minus two? And of course, the next bar was even better. It was a BNB. It was a BNB. And it triggered both the pivot KTR minus two, it triggered pivot, it triggered the KDR minus one. Wow, one bar triggered three things together at the same time. So seriously, this was a buy. But only thing is this, people ask this question, Cal, the bar, the signal bar is so big, right? Can we buy? The answer is, doesn't matter. You just have to buy. You just have to buy here. Your stop loss is placed here. So this is your range. Take your dollar value, divide by your range multiply by value per point, you will trade. That means no matter how far the range is, your losses will always be kept at the amount of money you risk. So if you risk $100, if the market comes down, you only lose $100. If you risk $200, you come down, you lose $200. But the point is this, what is the probability of losing? With the market in the CCRY right now, it triggered pivot to trigger this KTR, KSI is greed, KCX is there, everything is there. So what is the probability of you losing? That is a key point. So that's the reason why when the market goes up, right, to me, it was not even half unexpected. It was pretty expected by me. And of course, I did play a bit bigger than usual. And of course, when the market give me one-time profit, right, because how much I risk is how much I gain, right? I mean, whatever I risk, I make. So if I risk $500, I'll make $500. It was so simple. And of course, the whole thing took me less than 20 minutes. 20 minutes already, one time one profit given to all of us. And this is why the TWB system needs you to really understand and utilize it. Don't you find it amazing? Really, you don't need to be a guru. Don't you know you're in part of the Go Bank to know this. You just have to follow the rules. And don't you find it amazing? How did the market know? How did the TWB system know that this is a turning point? All these are all written inside the handbook that we have given out to people in the old, old, I mean, last time, and those now is on ePortal. All these are handout writing that's already written long before you even start trading. And now it's again manifesting right in front of us. Crazy, right? Don't you find it amazing? Okay, so now what can we do with go right now today? Let's look at go today. Now, this is the go chart right now. This is the MA. This is a normal chart. Okay, so how do I talk about this thing here? Let's take a look. Now, first of all, it's very clear that we have a very interesting phenomenon again. Yesterday, the gold price went down to touch the MA30 and rebounded. And the MA30 was 1800. And I told you, when gold can stay above 1800, it's a buy. So that's why we bought gold yesterday. Second, if the market can stay above MA200, it's even stronger buy. So now we are seeing this. So this morning, can you see that gold actually hovers at the MA200 beautifully? So I'm going to be very clear, clear, clear cut here. If the gold can stay above 1810 today, which is the one uh, MA200, gold is going to go up. Gold is going to go up. Okay, gold is going to go up. Okay, gold is going to go up to where? Around here itself. Okay, gold is going to go up to this point here. Okay, all right. Then of course, um, gold is going to go up. Gold is going to go up. Okay, sorry. Okay, so gold is going to go up here, and the uh, and the MA thirty, MA thirty is here, and that's what one eight zero zero. One eight zero zero is the gold level. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Uh, my mom buy go. No, the son buy go. Yes. <laughs> but as I told you guys, I still want the gold to come down lower before I can get my mom to buy. To me now, now it's still not the time to buy gold for my mom. But for us to buy intraday to make money, yes. Yeah, intraday to buy gold, yes. So today, gold is very clear. 1810 is a very critical level for us to buy gold. Then 1800 is a die die must hold level. If the gold plunge below these two numbers, likely it will sell. Okay. Now the upside where we go, 1829. Yes, 1829. That means we're going back to where we came from. So my first my first my thing is this gold will likely be going back up to 1829 later today or maybe tomorrow or this week, as long as he holds above the MA 200 which happened to be 1810. Clear? Okay, yeah? all clear. All right, for you, uh, go. As long as hold above MA200, which is 1810, can go long. Next support is 1800 MA30. Okay, so I've given you my cue for today uh, for gold. Okay, hopefully you guys get a cue from here. Okay, so I tell you what to do already. Uh? Okay, cool. All right, let me just clear my chart here. Okay, there's some profit taking on Hang Seng at the moment. Just saw that. See, Hang Seng, there's some profit taking. That's why it hit the KTR already, couldn't go up. That's why it's coming down a little bit. And I'm sure China A50 should be down. Yeah, it did. See, China A50 is down. That's why you are seeing that happening. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that is the goal on the conventional chart. I'm bullish today. So uh, I don't know what you guys will be doing, but uh, I'll let you decide. Okay, you guys make your own call on this. So how many of you are going to buy gold today? How many of you is going to buy gold today? If you're going to buy gold, please keep it with me, M-E. Okay. All right. So let me see how many of you are going to buy gold today. All right. Let me know. Okay, we have Min Hui, we're going to buy gold. We have Brian, buy gold. Cal, Cal has bought already. Eric has bought. Andrew, me, Jason, uh, Wee Min, King Hua. All right, cool. Let's see how it holds today. Yeah? Now, the weekly chart already tried, yeah, tested the uh, 81820 on la, last week. Now it's trying to test again. I suspect that you'll test again 1820. That is the midpoint of the MLP of the big, big sell off last week. I'm sorry, five weeks ago. Okay. So let's look at the chart today. Now, go. This is what go is showing today. Now, go today is what chart. Do you see that? What is go supposed to do today, guys? Today, the opening price for go is above pivot one. So, what should we do for go today? Come on, guys. Tell me, tell me, tell me. What should we do for go today? Above OP, what should we do? Tell me, tell me, tell me, what should we do? Now, it seems like, you know, we're doing this uh, MAO, it's also sound like a revision because this is a great time to learn. And you can see that a lot of you guys are always trying to revise what you learn. And also group people is all right. They will, they know what to do, but they refuse to do it because they found that, right, this is too simple for them and they just don't think that it will work. But proven record that it works. And that's a point that I want to show, all right? So indeed, excellent. CCRY buy, Brian, exactly. You say above OP, CCRY buy. That's the one that I'm looking out for. That's a perfect way to, to answer me because it must be above OP. Ma. <laughs> okay. All right. Any CCRY just long. Ah, join on better still. All right. Okay. So we got the idea already, right? Okay. Uh, the rest also correct. Like I just said, you know, it'd be better if you can answer me above OP, then buy. Yes, indeed. 
So let's look at the goal. Okay, it's like going up again, right? Is it? Okay. So guys, look at it. This is the OP of the day. This is the P1 of the day. So above OP, CCRY, buy. So here you buy gold. Here you stop loss. This is your range. And you look at it, how much you risk, let's say you risk $100 just now, you will make $100 in about half an hour's time. You see that? Amazing, right? Amazing, right? So we are now going to see something happening soon, guys. We are now four minutes away, four minutes away from the end of this uh, five-minute bar. And if this five-minute minute bar ended, we should look to buy gold. I suspect gold will go to here. Because gold should go easily to KTR plus one today. Well, 1819 is the target I'm aiming for gold, okay? So anyone stand by now. This is live. It's Cal Go Live. <laughs> okay, I suspect that gold later on, if this is going to be a CCRY, gold can be a buy all the way to at least 1819. But of course, you can hold it longer because, you know, KSI is green. You can go to KTR plus. You can go even higher, right? Who knows later on, gold may go even higher. It may go all the way to 1827. Okay. So maybe go later on, right? It may actually do a CCRY here. And then after that, stabilize, hit the 1819 first, then stabilize a little bit, then go up all the way to 1827. Okay. So 1819 is the target that I think will easily be triggered, in my opinion. And 1827 will be the target that I believe that it will be a good number to take some profit. Okay. So guys, are we ready for this? We will come back to this in about three minutes time, okay? So this is live sharing right here. All right, Cal go live. <laughs> okay, all right, so that's go. And this is the, okay, sorry. Now this is silver chart. Now silver yesterday plunged quite badly, right? And silver had came down to my target $25. So yesterday I bought some silver at $25. Yeah, indeed, I bought some silver at $25. Now, uh, basically I already tell my friend that $25 you buy some, $24 you buy some, $23 you buy some. So all these are all the small, small trades that we are just buying and keep. Now, of course you may say, but Kel, isn't it like catching a falling knife? I totally agree with you, but because silver is a, is a market that move on its own, so I'm just going to place level there to just buy and just leave it alone, okay, and leave it alone. So the question will be, uh, how low will silver be going down? Well, by right, uh, silver has a BNB. Can you see that? By right, silver has a BNB here. So by right, it should come down a bit more. Uh, so there's a bit more downside on gold, uh, silver, sorry. There should be some more downside on silver. Okay, so let's leave the silver will rebound from here. MLP today is at $25.40. Okay, MLP, yeah. Uh, $25.40 MLP for today. Okay, all right. So, of course, if I buy gold, maybe buy silver, right? Yeah, indeed. But just, you know, you just have to trade with gold correctly first. Okay, gold is going to start to enter the trade soon. We are just a couple of minutes away, 20, second, 20 seconds away. So, let's, let's look at it. I'll stay live with you right now. If gold can stay above, I mean, as a BMB, sorry, can close the CCRY then it could be a buy. So I'm gonna go live to do a buy for you right now on this uh, on this particular trade called Go. And let's see whether or not uh, we will come out profitable. Lah. But of course, nothing's 100%. So guys, do your risk management, okay? Okay, oops. Go is now below OP, cannot enter yet. Cannot enter yet, wait for a while. The word long must appear. The word long must appear. If the word long doesn't appear, that means that it's still below OP of the entry bar, okay? This is the thing why we have the word LNG for you. It's not to tell you what to do, but to let you know how it's too small, right? Uh, so you cannot differentiate whether is it above OP of the day, of the bar, sorry. So, oh, still don't have, uh, okay? <laughs> cannot enter, uh? cannot enter yet. Uh? Guys, cannot enter yet. Uh? Don't jump in to buy. Uh? Don't say, okay, uh, maybe you can buy it cheap. No, 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 it doesn't work that way, okay? It doesn't work that way, okay? So still cannot buy. Still cannot buy. So later when you can buy your text me, lah. I continue my MAO first, you know, the drag the afternoon already. Okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna go into the alternate market views right now. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do about crude oil first. So sorry. Uh sorry, sorry, sorry. Crude oil is very important to talk about today. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, sorry. Okay. 
Now, guys, this is my crude oil chart, which I draw for you. Remember, I draw this crude oil chart very long time ago. I told you I used the high end of this one back in 2020. Then I connected all the way to this guy here, and then I extrapolated it. And look at it, amazing, and the market crashed down. So the question is this, Kyle, crude oil goes down. I thought the cost will go down in trading. No, but um, no, it doesn't work that way. Uh, actually, crude oil goes down, equity market will also come down. On. Yeah, indeed. So that's the reason why uh, the last two days when the crude oil broke this technical point, I called for sell on crude oil. It is S&P, sorry. What am I talking about? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, sorry, sorry. My bad. Hey. Uh, hey. Ah, here, here, here. Sorry. Oh, I, my line deleted away. Am I, I, I draw it for you live right now. Get up. Uh, gosh. I must have deleted it away yesterday. Same line. It was the same line that how it draws MP. Yeah. Uh, here, here we go. Okay. Now, this is a discretional line that I draw. I took the high here and I extended to this point here. That was how I extended it. Then after that, when I extrapolate it, right, I saw the resistance here and it causes the crude oil to come down. And then the scary, scary part is this. Can you see that? It missed the stop lock, but we saw it's a BNB high, right? So the BNB turns down and I know that's a sell off. And when the market breaks below the MA30 again, right? Uh, that was it already. When you break the MA30, I know that crude oil is going to go down. So that's why when the crude oil go down, right, I didn't call for buy at $69 because I saw the way the selling was crazy. And the worst thing to happen was that the, um, the doji was there the day before. Doji always come with directional day and directional day usually will end at the low or end at the high. And in case it dropped near the low. So that's why yesterday all the way down, I did not call for buy on the gold uh, crude oil. So crude oil, of course, if you look at chart pattern itself, right, the chocolate bar, is actually the nearest one was here at 67.85. The next one was all the way down to about here, which is about this point, 66.53. So now we are somewhere around here, and I kind of suspect that the crude oil may have to come down all the way to even $63 just to touch and recover. So I kind of suspect that if this were to happen, right, the equity market will still fall further. So with crude oil coming down, equity stock will go down lower because all the energy counter will come down. And energy counter does have a weightage on the Dow component stock. Okay? All right. <laughs> Thank you for my live debut. Huh? Okay, got the idea? Yeah, indeed. That is how I see crude oil yesterday. Okay, that will be all for now. We're going to go into our this uh, alternate market views. Now, this one today is a bit lengthy today. I told you today, MEO is lengthy because there's so much thing to share. This is the alternate market views. I have covered, I also have a lot of things to share with you on this side today. So you can take about another 15 more minutes. If you think that you are rushing for time, just go ahead, do your personal stuff. Then you come back later on to watch the replay, okay? All right, apology for today, so-so. All right, I'll come back in. I'm gonna go first right now. Okay, go has came down, touch the MLP of the yellow bar. I like that. still hovering. Wow, ETH, uh, 1720. Wow, that's bad. Wow, okay. E Ethereum, 1720. The level that I, I said that you'll come down to 1710, right? Yeah, indeed, it's coming down to that level already, getting nearer and nearer. Good, good, good. The lower you go, the better it is. That's how I like it. Okay. Right. You have done the very nice selling. So likely if the equity market fall further, we can see even more selling. Thank you, Fred, for informing us. Appreciate that. BTC also dropped. Is it? Yeah, I mean, should be. Lah. Mm, let's see. BTC. Ah, wow, I dropped below 30,000 already. Okay, so that is that means the whole world is taking profit or taking position out of the equity from the cash market. That's why gold uh, still maintaining up, right? High chance gold later will go up. High chance, uh, my personal view, uh, my personal view. Okay, so let's talk about the alternate market views right now. 
Okay, so this is Dave Portner, right? You all know this guy, right? He was a very flamboyant commentator. He was a Amer he's a considered American internet celebrity, lah. He used basically he was a commentator for the Bass Two Sports. Now he's 44 this year, mm -hmm. two years older than me, and um, he basically yesterday was renting the way the market was performing. So let's hear, you know, quite fun. Let's watch. Nancy's come back. Nancy's at 34 bucks. That was at 72. That's I don't want to fucking sell. I don't like the way the whole system is set up. They all just get your money with the money. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do it fast. You're going to get out of it. Get it back. Bullshit. Nancy's come back. Okay, so. Initially, I thought he was acting because he loved to act. But after a while later, right, I, I find that he actually is speaking the truth. He's not acting. That means he's actually losing money. How, what do you think, guys? Do you think that Dave was actually acting or he's losing money? That's why he behaved like that. So what do you think, guys? Give me your opinion right now. So he said that he doesn't like the way the stock market is moving right now because all the counters that he's been calling, all the MIM stock are down by 50% or more. And it seems that Michael Burry is getting it right again. So that's the reason why last a uh, few weeks ago where, when the mean stock was recovering, right? Many people jeer on Michael Burry and say that this is again wrong and stuff like that. But um, two weeks later, it seems that he's actually correct. So what do you think, guys? Do you think that Dave is actually losing money? I don't know. I go, I will go and check his Twitter and see what he actually did. All right. But to me, like, when I see a trader be like that, like that, it does seem to be because normally traders, when they lose money, right? One of the things they always do is move their touch ahead. <laughs> okay, all right. So Morgan Stanley says that a 10 to 20% correction is ahead. Okay, so Morgan Stanley again has to go into defensive. He said that the direction is coming in. The strategist was Michael Wilson. We talked about this uh, last week. He says that there's a lot of exhaustion going on right now, and he believes that a 10 to 20% index correction is kind of expected. And of course, it's another guy um, from Morgan Stanley, uh, Rich Charles Shaman. He says that right, the market breath is definitely very bad. Now, market breath means that the percentage of stock rising each day and those making new highs are no longer in tandem with the index. And I mean, sharing with you on this several times, and I told you the market breath is not doing well, and true be told, it's really happening. Oh, okay. So, gold has a first sign for long already, is it? Okay, let's take a look. Quick, quick one. Okay. Oh, not yet. Uh, later. Okay, about there. Okay, long. Okay, I long go already. I've just long go. Okay, my stop loss order obviously will be placed here, which is a 1815, but for the spread be 1814.5. In my this is how I use it. Lah. And my TP level will be placed at 181978. Okay, I'm done. Uh, I placed my trade already. Let us see what happened later on. Okay, let's go. All right, so that is it. So apparently now the thing is that some of the strategies and uh, experts are all calling that there could be reason for the sell-off and there could be a bigger to come. So stock strategies says that the sell-off is by COVID and scare, and they see that right. This it says it's going to be more selling to come, and because of the yield now is one point one seven percent, it's actually more scary. So these are all the different people calling for sell. And of course, we have uh, BTIG Julia. He says that there is a good chance that SP may test 4,000, which is the 200 day moving average. And also, they are saying that um, the current moment now is not good. Another guy from Chrisette says that, right, this is a legitimate concern. And he says that there could be about 11% downside. So you realize something here where the market was at the top, no one called for it, right? No one talked for it. Everybody saying boo, 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 boo. Now market dropped, right? Wow, all the bear come out already. <laughs> no, <sighs> that is how things work like in life. Okay. All right. So listen, I'm just sharing with you. So some of them say that some of the stocks are already in bear market, right? These are the counters are already down by more than 20% from the recent 52 weeks high. So Discovery A, Viacom, uh, this uh, Carnival, Norwegian Cruise Line, Ventex, all these counters are now more than 30% from the high recently. So that is why we are sharing this. So theoretically speaking, if there's going to be any recovery, these are the counter when the market turn around again, you can short them again because they should be going down lower. 
So all the airline counters and cruise liner got hit yesterday, right? And I told you to, I warn you guys that they will get hit if the COVID-19 uh, cases increase again. And of course, people laugh over it. And now it's been proven. And of course, some of the counters are down more than 5%. So that is why I am sharing with you. Sometimes you really must know what you are watching and reading. And of course, this is another guy. He is saying that this uh, David Tice is a long time bear. So we have earlier this morning, we have uh, this Jeremy Segal. He is a long time bull. Today, a long time bear, David Dice. Okay, let's listen to what he has to offer. And uh, he says that at the moment now, the meltdown is unavoidable. But of course, it's a bear, perpetual bear. So of course, you keep on saying very negative stuff. So we have very positive stuff in the morning and very negative stuff in the second half of the morning. So this is why people have two views, even though they came from the same school probably, or they have they are educated the same way, but they may not have the same view. All right, let's watch what he had to say. A quick one minute. Okay, so we have some problem now. The sound again. I'm gonna. I'm not going to waste time here. It was a long MAO, but simply he's just saying that the market is kind of at the peak right now. It's time to sell. Okay, I'll put a video later on through the. Um, to our group chat later. Apology for that. You mean 1817.5? What's that? Eric, what do you mean by that? Okay, so now this is the interesting thing I want to share with you. This is the fear and greed index, right? Now, you notice that it's from CNN. Huh? Now, the fear and greed index today, uh, very surprisingly, right? We're at 16, no? Now, the last time when the index, uh, this fear and greed index was at 16, uh, it was back in 2020. And the last time when this happened as well, right, the Dow Jones uh, was, <clears throat> was way, way lower. So today, the index has revisited 16, right? But we are at a much, much higher level. And don't forget as well, right? So in short, uh, the S&P now is about 3.5% from the all-time high. But the, the point is this. The time when we saw something like this, uh, where the fear indicator was at 16, right? Where S&P was down by 40%. So that means that now we have come to a point, everybody is very panicky. No one is going to buy anything happened in the market. People sell already. Very fragile, anxiety, and very dangerous. It's like a glass, um, uh, a glass shoe. And that's what the feeling right now happening. And of course, we also must remind yourself, right? Remember, I showed you last week, that Goldman Sachs already took out $5.5 billion from the market, which is something that you must remember that, okay, they have taken out 5.5 already, okay, and that was excluding the 1.5 they purchased, so in short, was $7 billion. So why would Goldman Sachs want to take out when they, if the market is good? So that is the reason why I'm telling you this somewhere is actually very wrong. All right, I think the stop loss is 1814.5, right? No, no, uh, entry price, is 1817.5. Is the stop loss 1814.5? It's just a morning pun, exactly. It's just a morning pun. Okay, normally I won't trade this, but this is a above OP, above pivot one. I will do that. Just morning pun. Okay. And of course, you can see down the market breath. I told you right. Remember, guys, remember this when I show you this. When the market breath was up, the market was up. Then after that, the market go higher recently. I said the market breath is coming down. I told you guys, I to be very, very careful. I warn some of you. And of course, bang, the market came down. So that's why I say the market breath is actually a very important indicator. But what is even more scary is that, look, you notice this, usually the market breath and the market itself is going to be, it's quite correlated and they're side by side. But now we're having a very big, 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 you know, distance between them. So for the S&P to come down to meet the market breath, uh, the S&P must drop all the way down to at least 4,000. Eh? Do you think so? Nah? Do you think the S&P will hit 4,000? Do you think so? Well, this is going to be possible. Anything is possible. So let's see how it goes. Huh? All right, unless the market breath turn up. Now, how can the market breath turn up, right? It's only when the buyers say that it's time to buy. They try to buy more shares than normal while the index is falling. And then the market breath should turn up. And that could bring the... It will change the whole thing again. All right. And of course, the VIX indicator, I told you guys, I've been saying for weeks. All right. I told you guys, if the VIX indicator come to 16, I told you guys, it'll be a lovely time to buy. And you can see that beautifully. 16 was traded for more than 10 days. And for 10 days, I've been telling you guys, and 10 days, people laugh at me and tell me that this is not going to work. But today now, it's at 24. And that's my point, guys. You see, end of the day, all this tells you that patterns really works. You just have to follow and trust and have faith in it. Correct or not? 
So remember this, those remember that I did say that VIX will go up, right? Can you keep those spot on for me? Just to validate what I just said. When I say that, you know, I believe that go, I mean, this uh, VIX will go up and it really, really happens. All right. Um, will AIMS put VIX symbol? I, I will, I'm asking them, they haven't get back to me yet. Uh, because VIX itself, the supply and demand is very low in the market. Yeah, so I don't think it's possible. Even they put in the spread be quite big. So it's kind of tough. Lah. I, 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 already asked, put on my, I already put up this, but I don't think it's very possible. But I'll get back to you, okay? All right, no other brokers do have that. And I never say you can use other broker, right? Yeah, use another broker that you think will be better for you. Go ahead. Use it, whatever, that it will help you to make money in the market. Don't need to stay with AIMS all the way if you don't want them. But of course, I'm quite sure that as long as you guys make money from the market, that is more important to me. All right, thank you guys. Really, thank you. Uh, those who are with me, you all know that I was calling for VIX for a very long time. And I told you that 16 come down just by. And uh, it seems that it really works. Uh. Thank you guys. Those who stay spot on. Thank you. And last but not least, you can see this one. This is the one that I want to talk to you about. The S&P versus the US Treasury 10-year yields versus 2021 versus 2020. I know that this is a lot of versus here, but the main thing is this. This is what's happening right now, recently. Yeah? The S&P just came off, right? Because the 10-year yield coming off, okay? That was what happened. It's happening right now today, okay? But the problem is that you look carefully what happened in 2020. It has a little bit of scary pretty scary connotation there, which means that you look carefully, right? This is what happening today. Okay. This is what happening today. This is what happening one year ago. Okay. And the way the chart movement look at it is very identical, very identical. So the thing is this, if there's any form of a guidance here, the time was 1.17 for the yield, the S&P was at uh, 42, 48 today. Now, last time S&P was at only um, at 32, 34, and the yield was 1.5. So that means that now, right, the, the, by the logic of this drawing, right, the time the yield dropped all the way was, I mean the yield was already here. Okay, all right, at 1.17%. This is what happened uh, now versus then, okay? And the S&P also dropped quite a fair bit. So in short itself, right, there is a possibility. And of course, what causes the market to fall like this? It was a pandemic. So the pandemic came from China. And after that, the thing spread across the whole world. All get it. So now you understand why am I talking about the COVID and repeating myself. So now you see England going open up, US opening up, and uh, some other European countries open up, Northern America opening up. So if let's say the pandemic really, really hit another time, example, and with the yields doing this way now and the stock market at a higher, higher value, right? That is a small possibility that the entire market may cave in over the next few months. That's the reason why I said that, that why traders, you must be very careful uh, about this view of mine is that, that if the August, September month, if there's any problem they need to resolve or they mean to really taper because they, the market is over, overheated, right? they will really do the tapering because it's not long. If the market is not, not able to perform and the inflation is going higher, then the market will have to taper to basically stop the, the thing from, from creating here. So that is the reason why I'm saying that traders, you have to be very, very careful coming August and September. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for today's MAO. It's a long one. I know it's two hours long, but I'm sure you guys have benefited from it. And I wish you all the best. And later on, I will call you. Uh, we talk, we talk about we do more on the Super Tuesday. We talk about BMB. We talk about this KFC. All right. I'll see you guys. Have a great day. This is Cal signing off. Bye bye.